Right. Thank you very much for that, champion of the consumer. The other thing we're going to talk about um, this morning is this excess uh, deaths in Portugal. Mm. Um, Portugal was known as the most highly vaccinated company, company, uh, Freudian slip country, um, <laughs> um, in those in those dark times. And now it's the place with the most uh, with the highest level ex of excess deaths in Europe. What do you make of that, XGP um, uh, doc, Andy? Well, if you go onto Euromomo and look at the website, the first thing is that actually. Um, we were statistically not too far off Spain, although we we're, we're reverting to normal, not quite so quickly. But we we were statistically not far off Spain, um, and it appears to be the case that it is the um, the kind of middle age range, the the um, the young and the. the and Mm, seems to have lost your sound there, Doc. Sorry. No, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, got you back again now, yeah. Okay. Um, it seems to be the so the the naught fourteen group actually stayed around the expected deaths. Fifteen to forty four didn't get too much higher. Um, it was those recalcitrant anti vaxxers in the forty five to sixty four um, age group uh, where the excess deaths um, got way above ten as they did in Spain, um, but they are coming down very quickly. And um, so, you know, when you when you first um, asked me about it, I saw and I said, well, you know, this is still subject to correction for delays, um, as indeed as indeed those figures still are. And it's it's one month and that's insufficient to really get worried about it. Um, but I do note that, and rightly so, um, given the um, apparent demographic distribution of this apparent increase, that they're using it to push for um, increased vaccine uptake in this age group, which were the ones who seem to have suffered um, a statistically higher death rate. So your your theory would be that the, the, the amount of deaths or the reason people are dying is because they weren't vaccinated? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely believe that because <clears throat> it's in exactly the uh, age range um, where vaccine take up was least. Mm, interesting. OK. And um, why do you think I mean, what 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 um, I think there, you know, there are a number of theories about why this might be. And what what interests me about this is why it's not being investigated. Um, why, when we had at the beginning of the pandemic, um, you know, just a little bit of footage from China or those, those, do you remember those, those very, um, sort of they're iconic in a way now, aren't they? The mm. uh, people falling over in China in the street, um, mortuaries in Italy, and we shut down society, um, in case that would, was going to be happening in, in Portugal or the rest of the world for, for that matter. And governments were quick to do so. And I don't think there was anything like the number of excess deaths as, as a result of that. But now there are, there doesn't seem to be the same public health concern. Uh, so do you think the, the, the public health officials take the same line that you do, that this is just people who didn't bother to get vaccinated who are now dying of, of COVID-19? Well, hold on. Um... I have to look at the at the absolute numbers, but I don't believe that the excess deaths, the recent excess deaths, uh, in any can in any way um, relate or or, or uh, uh, trying to get think of the word um, be in excess of the numbers that happened um, around that around that time. And this is one, as I said, this is one month. And it's coming down. Um, already, it's it's back down almost to uh, less than a substantial increase. The latest figure being that the Z score is actually right on four, which is the um, level at which uh, a substantial increase is is determined. Mm -hmm. So, um, if it gets any lower, it's virtually in the normal range. Um, 
uh, among among that age group and if it's if we look at all range let me have a look all ages all ages it's still a bit higher because of the um where are we it's interesting how these statistics work always uh, i would say i think it's the yeah so the elderly elderly group there's a uh, there is a higher z score but you expect that in the winter anyway um to a certain extent yeah okay, okay. Uh, uh, so we've got a question from Mrs. Emmett. I, I want to know about the sudden unexpected deaths. Well, why exactly might someone just drop dead because they were unvaxxed? So, th but that's that's a, a surprise to me again because we're not hearing that. that um, well, where, hold on. Where does it say a sudden a sudden death? Well, that, I, well, that, that, let's let's rewind a little bit. What are they dying of? You 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 think they're dying? Their, their death certificates of these extra people, seven hundred a week, would have COVID nineteen on them. Right, so those death certificates haven't yet been analysed in terms of cause. Yeah, it's too early to have done that. Um, okay. It's easy enough to take the absolute numbers, but it's difficult to to yet, yet have yeah. uh, gone gone through the the causation. Yeah, um, and I would say there there are two things. First of all, big swings in uh, uh, and the the reason for sudden increases. So there's a difference between sudden increase and increase in sudden. This was a sudden increase. Sudden increase in deaths um, over and above what would be expected. Mm -hmm. And I think the sudden increase was a factor of a number, it was, was due to a number of things. First of all, um, we had um, a fairly, what was a fairly mild autumn, which suddenly got a lot colder. And um, this doesn't help our uh, ability to fight um, seasonal viruses at all and um, when you when you have a mild autumn the seasonal viruses spread a lot but then when if you get a sudden drop in the temperature then um, as well as a high um, level of viral load in the population you then also get um, a, a reduced ability to fight it and that happened very quickly um, the other thing it coincided with unfortunately was um, uh, a worsening of the healthcare staff to patient ratio um, across the public sector in Portugal. So um, I heard that uh, in Luria Hospital on Christmas Day, there were two doctors available um, that they shut down paediatrics totally um, and everyone was shifted to Quimbra. Um, and this is down to the mismanagement of of um, uh, staff resourcing within the SNS um, and the underpayment of professionals. And that's a, a whole other story, but you would expect me to get um, public expenditure in here somewhere. No, of um, course, of course. And, and, <laughs> I, and again, I would say I don't understand why I don't understand the public health response for whatever the cause is, why is there not the same response? It, that that I, I, and I'm not expecting you you to answer that because you probably can't. It's you know it's it, it's just it just seems strange to me um, that we have a crisis of this of this scale, yet n nothing like a response that we were that we we uh, were treated to as it were in 2020. But I guess you know I, I, I hear you. I thank you for your for your your response. And we just have to wait and see then, don't we, to see what the cause is. Uh, is that what you're saying? The, the cause of death will be will give further information and insight into what's going on here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it does seem to be concentrated in southern Europe, specifically the Iberian Peninsula, and less so, but but certainly identifiably within Italy. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it is a combination of um, vaccine profile um, uh, temperature and uh, and staffing levels. Well, I thank you for that and welcome any other um, opinions where, uh, and insight into this um, as we continue this conversation. And hopefully we won't have to have the conversation because the whole thing will just go away um, and, it, and things will return to some sort of status quo. Uh, oh, and very quickly then, before we talk to B. Rosie, um, disease X. I thought it was dizzy sex, Andy, that they were talking about at Davos. But no, not dizzy sex. Disease X. 
How is it we're getting ready for something that's 20 times more powerful? It's quite a specific number, isn't it, um, than, than we were currently used to. And they're already working on something, on, on um, some sort of treatment for something we don't know what it is yet that's 20 times. Do you smell a fish with this? Is, is, this, is there some sort of um, um, agenda going on behind that when, when it seems so mysterious but yet so well planned for? I suspect um, that some um, uh, some AI enthusiast in some public health research somewhere with um, uh, too much access to um, influencers in the uh, global elite has said, look, my artificial intelligence says that this is what is likely to happen. Therefore, this is what we ought to be doing in case it does happen. Oh, okay. And, and, some like people, and whatever your agenda is, you might rub your hands at such a, an AI intervention. If you're, you're a, if you're a CEO of a global pharmaceutical firm, you might indeed, yeah. Mm, doc, okay, on that rather da, 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 note, we <laughs> are you going to stay and chat with B. Rosie? He's a very uplifting fellow, I think. I will, although I haven't heard anything about uh, of his t until today. But yes, I will <laughs> for a bit. Anyway, just give him a nice big round of applause and bring him onto the screen. B. Rosie, I think live from the Lisbon area. Hello, mate. Good morning to you. Hola, bon dia. How are you? Hola. How's it going, guys? Hola. Um, yeah, we're, good. We're, we're doing great, and we were cheered by your tune earlier on. F A M I L Y. Absolutely love that. So, congratulations.